Welcome back to the Soda Pop Podcast. This is episode two of our trip to the Connie D. McKinney Center, and today we have some amazing guests with us. So the UNA's culinary department just finished up their chopped competition, and today we have the winners with us. If you haven't already, make sure you go check out our previous episode with Laura McKee, which took place right here in the McKinney Center as well. So uh, first things first, can you tell us a little bit of a little bit about yourselves, like your names, your major. I'm Jeffrey Power. I'm a junior, and my major is hospitality management. Cool. I'm Cameron McGee. I'm a junior as well, maybe a senior now, <laughs> in uh, culinary management. It's my degree. Okay. Or, or as I refer to them, Shaggy and Scooby. I have a very <laughs> hard time with names, so <laughs> Shaggy and Scooby. Which is which? We don't know. <laughs> okay, so um, you guys are all into the culinary arts. So what kind of started you guys on that path? What got you interested in being in the culinary arts? Well, I guess just I really like eating food. So like, <laughs> that's sorry. Yeah, it's a pretty good reason. Yeah. Uh, I originally went to UAH for a few years for political science and sociology. And the last election, I just kind of got burnt out on politics. So I took a break off school and I just realized I was cooking all the time, watching videos and cooking. And one night I found out they had a culinary program here and just applied and I'm glad I did. That's pretty cool. Are are you asking me the same question? I thought you were focusing on them. Oh no. I mean, I've I've been doing this since I was six years old in my grandma's kitchen, so. Um, it's just a lifelong passion for me. That's awesome. Yeah. So for this competition, um, what were the rounds actually like? And as you progressed through the competition, did the rounds become harder or was it just kind of like a mental game? Um, we had what, 30 minutes per round, I think. Yeah. Uh, 30 minutes for the entree and a little bit long, or 30 minutes for the appetizer, a little bit long, longer for the entree round. And, um, in, in making the baskets, the mystery baskets for the rounds, um, we tried to do some curveballs and, and some weird things that you normally wouldn't see, but but nothing too outlandish like you'd see on on TV, like imported things from China that you've never heard of. I mean, these are all things you can get at the grocery store, mm-hmm. just maybe not in the aisles that we normally shop in. Um, and and they did, they did a fantastic job with making a cohesive dish out of the ingredients. So um, I, I think we did get a little bit harder as it went along, um, but but nothing nothing like beef tongue or anything too weird, <laughs> <laughs> which we did when we when we did a competition amongst ourselves with with our chefs. We actually had beef tongue as one of the ingredients. Oh, that's cool! Wow, that, <laughs> bet that was a little that's difficult crazy. to. So I mean, for those of us who aren't actually who haven't participated in this, it's kind of like you see the cooking shows on TV such as like Chopped and like MasterChef and all that um, and it's something that we just watch and we don't really think about it so what was kind of the pressure like on you guys actually competing in a format like that? The pressure was pretty intense it really hit you right right before yeah. it started we were all nervous but uh, Chef Anar from schools took me to a competition before in Nashville so I just collected myself and tried to just focus on the task like I'm not too good on the improvisation but so like it helps with like practice of like helping you to adapt with like I guess like something happened I don't know how to word this (laughs) you good I mean but that that's that's the whole thing with this is that you have a limited amount of times with thing things you're just seeing for the first time you open the basket and all of a sudden it's, you have 30 minutes and it's, it's not like, well, I know how to make chicken parm or I know how to make this kind of soup. It's when you open the basket, I've, I've never used this before. Mm-hmm. So, and, and before you know it, those 30 minutes are gone. And that's one thing I kept trying to, I, I, I've done a few myself and I kept trying to stress that is like, guys, you know, get your plan, get it going because cause before you know it, time's up. Mm-hmm. Now for the rounds exactly, um, was it very much like, how the chopped competition goes like on TV, like, or was it teams and how many teams were there during each round? Kind of thing like that. We were on teams. There was okay. two teams for each round and two people on each team. 
uh, except one team had three people because of the class size. But, mm -hmm. uh, but it was pretty much, other than that, pretty much just like the TV show. So we, we did a progressive format. So, I mean, these guys did, did our first one that we did back at the beginning of the semester against another team. They advanced, so they didn't do the second one. There was two different teams there. And the winner from that faced them in the finale, which we just had this week. Okay. 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 So and that was the winner's face-off. I saw it on the Instagram account. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, that makes that makes sense. So you said that you actually got taken to a competition before. Was that your, your first one that you ever gone to? Yes. Okay. It was an ACF competition. So. You think it um, kind of helped you prepare mentally for this for this challenge? I do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It helped me. Somehow I learned up there to put my nerves aside and just get through it. And I think that helped me a little bit. But I was still nervous. I think we all were. Like I was still was nervous a little bit after the competition was done. Yeah. yeah the well, nerves yeah. get to you and then you just kind of have to hold on to them for a little bit before they actually subside, so. Until you actually realize that you've you've gone through it and it's all done now. Yeah. Because I, I, I do that a lot with music too. I get nervous before a performance, then I perform then after the performance, the nerves, in some sense, they actually get kind of worse. Which, um, did that happen for you guys too? Or did it just kind of not calm for, down? Not for me. Like, I think I had the same amount of nervous through the whole thing, just adapting to it. Mm -hmm. She's like, like knowing that I'm nervous and like using that to like, yeah. to try to do better, but like not crash and fail through because of nervousness. So um, now y'all had judges. Um, was were the judges the same each round, or did it um, change with each round that y'all did? Well, uh, we had uh, Josh Quick from Odette downtown. He he was he he judged all three rounds, so he's like our all star judge. He was there every time, and, and he showed some good support. And then um, Heather, who works in this building, she judged two of the rounds. And, and then we had some people popping in and out. And almost, and, and not actually on purpose, but almost like you'd see on TV, if you yeah. watch CHOP, you'd have your one or two people that are always there, and then the third one kind of rotates the in and out. One. So it, it was kind of kind of like that. Okay, so I guess this is gonna be more of a question towards you. What were kind of the judging criteria that you guys implemented into this? Like, I know we all know that on like TV, they'll say, you know, which one is like, looks the best, which tastes the best, and it takes all those components and puts them all together. Is that kind of like the same format that you guys use? Yeah, I mean, look, look no, nobody's here to reinvent the wheel. So um, it, it, it basically, it, that's where I ripped it off from. <laughs> <laughs> so like, how, how do we judge this? I don't know, well, Google chopped score sheet, and, and there it was, and it's exactly how it was on TV. I wasn't trying to come up with anything different or crazy. It's like, you know, what do they actually judge on? It's appearance, taste, mm -hmm. and, and what did they actually do with, with the secret ingredients? They just was it a, a a piece of meat in the basket? They just took it off and cooked it, and there it is. Or did they do something special with it? So that and that and that was the biggest criteria was, was use of the mystery ingredients. Okay, so you guys are obviously the winners. So can you give us like a little insight on what your winning dish was, and how you like put it all together in that you know thirty minute time period? Uh, I don't know. I was very surprised at the dish we could come up with. So once we got a game plan going, it made me feel a little better. But uh, we had to use canned rice pudding. Yes, <laughs> rice pudding. And canned, canned, canned smoked ham and fish, catfish. And uh, we did a blackened fish with a lemon dill risotto. And uh, what else did we do? There's uh, some broccoli on there. Yeah. We made just, a, just to make the, pape, the plate pop, there's some color. Made a sauce with the uh, canned rice pudding. and. Uh, did a hop and John topping with the ham, and it turned out very well. So, are you guys? You said you're juniors, and you're maybe a senior, maybe. <laughs> so, <laughs> are you guys planning on participating again in the next competition? I certainly would. Yeah. Okay. Right, that's gonna be really cool. Learn stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you guys are students, obviously. So, for those you know, culinary students, or even those who are just interested in cooking, do you guys have any, like, advice to give them towards making themselves better in the culinary industry? I think the best thing you can do is to work in the industry as you go to school or even before, just to make sure you're 
willing to give it what it takes because it's a, it's a pretty stressful work environment at times. So you need to make sure you're very passionate about it before you start. A little bit of what he said, like get into the industry, like work there. Make sure you, this is what you want to do because it's very intuitive to be part of it. It's kind of like a stressful industry, kind of. I can see that, like you see on these, um, on all the TV shows, you know, like MasterChef and Chopped, you see that all these people are, are just kind of like instinctually putting everything together. And then from time to time, you'll have these, these cooks who have like nervous breakdowns in the middle of it. <laughs> So, I mean, I think it's good you work your way up to being in a professional in the industry so that type of thing doesn't happen. So you learn to manage your nerves, like you said, and use them to your advantage, like you said. So I think practice is just basically the best thing that you can do in any industry, let alone, you know, the culinary industry. Yes. And do you also have some advice um, as being, you know, the executive chef? And um. <clears throat> You know, I guess advice comes a dime a dozen. I, I, there's so many quotes I could give you. Uh, I, I really I admire a, a chef named Chris Hill. He's like a blue collar chef, and he'll give you all. All his quotes are fantastic, and I wish I could remember one. But 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 the gist of it is that 99% of the people that get into this industry are, are not going to be the people you see on TV. You're you're not going to make a million dollars. But um, and, you know, you have to choose something that you love, and you'll never have to work a day in your life, kind of thing. Um, and, and just and just be yourself. I mean, nobody thought butter on grits was a good idea until somebody did it, and they said, "Oh, holy cow, that really tastes good." <laughs> so you were saying about opening the basket and being instinctual about what what to do with the ingredients. Sometimes you just take a chance. So never be afraid to take a chance. Mm -hmm. And I can I guess that can also be said with um, you know since we are at the school of the arts, saying uh, said about a lot of the arts um, is you know take a chance and always doing what you love. So being uh, committed to, even though it is a risk, and even though you are putting yourself out on the line for doing something that you love, that most people would be like, I don't know yeah, if that, that's right. a good idea. Right. But you love it, and so you do it because you love it. Yeah, to beat a dead horse, I mean, with another cliche saying, I, I used to work for a guy named Todd Lewis, and he would always say, if you, if you always do what you always did, you always get what you always got. So if you want something better than what you always got, try to do something else. So, one last thing I want to ask you guys. Um, I know in other industries like music, you'll have people that you look up to that you idolize. Do you guys have any, you know, chefs that you look up to, you idolize, and you try to kind of be like them, or you want to grow to be like them? Well, growing up, I, like, go, before going to bed, I always watch Good Eats by Alton Brown, and, like, just watching that over and over again, like, just the enjoy of food, just really. Okay, so that's kind of what brought you into the, into the industry, kind of. I can see that. That's yeah. Uh, for me, Julia Child is amazing. Like I still watch Julia Child every night, and uh, she was very great. But other than that, the chefs at school and at work where I work, they uh, really motivated me to be a, a lot better cook. So I owe them a lot. Do you have any influencers that you that you I, I mean, looked up to? I think everyone in this business has to say Julia Child. You know, it has, it has to be in there somewhere. I know our, our resident dining director, Ashley Terry, over at Main Market, um, and she's a graduate from here. Uh, I know that's one of her big influences. Um, but just, just people like I, I've already mentioned, Chris Hill, and uh, there's Rick Bayless, and there's just a, a ton of people. I mean, Thomas Keller, but I, I, I don't... You know, I don't have patience to cook the fancy food that he cooks, but uh, just people that you can go back and read their books and say, hey, you can take something away from it. Um, I, I really get inspired by those people. Awesome. Well, we really want to thank you guys for coming and being part of this podcast. And congratulations on you two for winning the competition. Thank you. That's thank a, you. It's a big thing to, to do. So for those of you listening who are looking to be in the culinary, take their advice seriously. Uh, they may be students, but they're still working in the industry, as they said. So make sure to check them out. Do you guys have social medias or for your... It's just the personal accounts for me, but I do. Okay. 
Okay, well, make sure you guys go check out the culinary, all the culinary social medias. UNA, UNA Culin- Dining. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And thanks for the plug. Yes. <laughs> yes. So. Their, their social media is very up to date all the time. So, and that is, yeah. That's this one here. <laughs> <laughs> make sure you go check them out. Thank you guys for listening. Um, if you haven't listened to our last episode with Miss Laura McKee, go check it out. We had a really cool episode with the fashion merchandising um, students. So go check it out. And if you're looking to participate in Chopped, you know, participate next year. It's a good way to practice, good way to have fun. If you lose, so what? <laughs> Still <laughs> you practice. Still put exactly. Um, also, check out our social media uh, for updates for the new podcast episodes that will come out. Um, and thank you so much for listening. Thank you. This podcast has been brought to you by UNA School of the Arts, produced by Mark Gallegos and Lainey Green, hosted by Dr. Terrence Brown. Special thanks to Monica Collier and the SOTA staff.